Good morning. morning. We welcome you to God's house this morning. So glad to see all of you on this nice and warm Minnesota winter day. So, is it is it cold out today, Nora? It is. Uh, Elsa says it's nice and warm out today. So, but we uh, thank you for for coming, and uh, we're going to continue kind of our our epiphany. Uh, series uh, where we kind of look at, at Christ being revealed, and so we're going to look at uh, the Beatitudes and, and how Jesus kind of gives his first big sermon uh, and kind of tells us uh, what it means to be blessed. Uh, and so we'll look just at, at what Jesus kind of looks at of, of blessings, uh, certainly not the way the world sees uh, blessings, but how we as, as followers of Jesus can kind of follow him and, and follow his example uh, to, to make sure that, that people know who he is and, and what he has done uh, for the world. Uh, so we'll look more at that this morning. Uh, before we begin, let's begin with a word of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for just this opportunity to come into your house, uh, to put uh, the rest of our lives aside and just come and, and hear your word and uh, just uh, seek your presence. Uh, and as your son has told us, what it means to be blessed, uh, especially that gift of eternal life that has been given to us uh, because of what your son has done for us. Uh, let's be reminded of that and just focus on that uh, and let all that we do in our lives uh, point people to that gift that you have given uh, to the world uh, through your son. And just bless our time together. It's in your name we pray. Amen. I invite you to stand and greet those that are all around you. We welcome all those that are online this morning. Welcome to worship. standing for our first hymn, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling.
We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. He is the source of your life in Christ Jesus, whom God made our wisdom, and our righteousness, and our sanctification. Let us go to the throne of God's grace, confessing our sins and asking his mercy for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. We cannot repay God for our offenses, but he has given us his only Son to pay for every sin. And as a call and servant of Christ, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. And let us pray. Almighty God, you know we live in the midst of so many dangers that in our frailty we cannot stand upright. Grant strength and protection to support us in all dangers and carry us through all temptations. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. And so as we finish our month of January here, uh, this month we have just been reminded uh, that we are part of that uh, royal uh, priesthood of God uh, and that he has called us out of that darkness into his light uh, and we get to then go and proclaim his name uh, and excellencies to all the world. And so let's just say uh, this verse twice this morning. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. First Peter 2 9. And one more time. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. First Peter 2.9 Our Old Testament reading this morning comes from the book of Micah, the sixth chapter. Hear what the Lord says. Arise, plead your case before the mountains, and let the hills hear your voice. Hear, you mountains, the indictment of the Lord, and you enduring foundations of the earth. For the Lord has an indictment against his people, and he will contend with Israel. O my people, what have I done to you? How have I weaned you? Answer me. For I brought you up from the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of slavery. And I sent before you Moses, Arian, Aaron, and Miriam. O my people, remember what Balak, king of Moab, devised, and what Balaam, the son of Beor, answered him, and what happened from Shittim to Gil Gilgal, that you may know the saving acts of the Lord. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O oh man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Our epistle reading this morning comes from the book of 1 Corinthians, the first chapter. The word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will throw it. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God the world did not know God through wisdom, it pleased God through the folly of what we preach to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks seek wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and folly to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For consider your calling, brothers. Not many of you were wise according to the worldly standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, even things that are not, to bring to nothing things that are, so that no human being might boast in the presence of God. He is the source of your life in Christ Jesus, whom God made our wisdom and our righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Therefore, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. This time I invite all children to come and join me for a children's message this morning. Good morning. How are we this morning? Good. So um, I have a question for you. What makes you happy? Okay. Good job. Good answer. Me too. Lupita, what else makes you happy? Family? Elias? Grandpa and grandpa. Good answer. Pastors. Good job. Pastors? Dogs or pets? No pastors. No dads? That's it. Yeah. You can think about that one when we get home. Yeah, there's lots of things that that make us happy. Um, Maybe, like, if if you're a pastor, maybe, like, winning a basketball game would just make you happy. The Packers winning the Super Bowl, the Bison winning. Yeah, all, all good things. Um, and, and so, do you think God wants us to be happy? Absolutely, he does. Um, but in a little bit, you're going to hear uh, Jesus talking about kind of happiness um, and, and being blessed. And, and they're kind of a little different th- than what we might think. So I'm going to share a couple of these with you so that you're kind of prepared um, and, and hear what you think. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Do you think it's good to be poor? No. What do you think Jesus is saying? Poor in, in spirit. Anybody who's not poor yeah. It, it, it also reminds us that, are we sinners? Yes. Yeah. Do we do bad things? Yes. Yeah. Sometimes? I do it all the time. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Ask that girl back there if if pastor does some things that kind of make her just shake her head. Yep. She's just going to smile and, and nod. Yeah. And God's reminding us here that poor in spirit means that that we are reminded that that we need who all the time? Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. Um, And and Jesus says here, blessed are those who are sad. I thought we were supposed to be happy. What do you think Jesus is saying? Do you think he wants us to be sad? No. No. But he he also reminds us that because we are are sinners, um, we we do things that that aren't what God wants us to, to do. And so kind of to no, be reminded of why we need Jesus. Um, and and do we, should we help people out? Yeah, absolutely. It's not all about us. 
um, but it's about helping others. Uh, and, and do you think Jesus wants us to be picked on? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Amen to that, Lupita. He goes, blessed are those who are persecuted or picked on. Jesus reminded us that even though um, we believe in him, are there people in this world who don't believe in Jesus? Some people out there. And, and he's reminding us that we need to, to stand strong in, in what we believe in and that we are going to go to heaven. And, and that's what we need to also tell people about is, is about Jesus and, and what Jesus has done for us. And so when you hear these things, and we'll talk a little bit more about this in my sermon, because I know you all pay attention during my sermon, right? Good answer. Good answer. Some people would fall asleep. Can you believe that? Like, who would fall asleep during pastor's sermon? Not you guys. But we're going to hear about how Jesus kind of tells uh, things that, that don't always make sense uh, in this world. But most importantly, what Jesus reminds us as we hear these things is that it's about him uh, and what he will do for us, but most importantly, where we are going. Because where are we going one day? Heaven. Heaven. And is that going to be a perfect place? Absolutely. Um, all this stuff that kind of Jesus talks about um, won't, won't exist. Um, we'll be with him and see him face to face, and it's going to be amazing. And so that's exactly what Jesus is kind of reminding us too, is where we are going. So as he starts his ministry, he kind of points people to the end uh, in heaven. Uh, and so we, we thank God for that. And so let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of your Son. Uh, and we know that in this world, sometimes it's hard uh, to seek things that are always going to make us happy. Uh, but we know that you are our only source of true happiness. Uh, and let us continually seek you and that reward that you give to us in heaven. And let us share that with the world. It's in your name we pray. Amen. All right, you may go and have a seat. Thank you for coming up. Now, in respect to the Holy Gospel, I invite you to stand if you are able. And let us say the verse together. Alleluia. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Alleluia. Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Seeing the crowds, Jesus went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise we continue with our next hymn, Blessed Are They.
you from God, our Heavenly Father, and through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gives us the example to follow and how to live our lives. Be with you all. Amen. You may be seated. Well, this morning we, we hear a text from the gospel, uh, one that uh, is, is Jesus' is kind of first big sermon. Uh, and, and we see here that Jesus kind of tells us what to do, how to, to live our lives, but most importantly, how to follow him. And he talks about blessings. And, and certainly, as, as we kind of share with the children, and as we have heard those, the, the idea of what Jesus has in blessings it is not kind of what the world and what we might think of how blessings occur. And so I want to start off of my sermon this, this morning um, by, by sharing a, a quick story with you. Uh, usually when I, I kind of prepare for a sermon, I, I sometimes listen to, to sermons uh, on the text. And, and so this past week I was listening to a sermon uh, of one of my seminary profs. And as he was kind of sharing a story, it brought back a, a memory of the story he was sharing. The place he was talking about was a place that I went to on Vicarage. And this is a, a place, a neighborhood in St. Louis. And, and here's a, a picture of this neighborhood. This is a neighborhood in St. Louis that is probably the roughest, meanest, poorest, most dangerous neighborhoods in St. Louis. There are houses that are, are burned down. There are signs that actually say, don't shoot kids at play. The buildings and places that you just want to get there and get out as fast as you can. They actually have in the streets big concrete barriers so that people have trouble doing drive-by shootings. It can't be a straight path. And there's a lady that has a heart for this neighborhood. And she talked about how she wants someone to be the leader of that neighborhood, that will live in that neighborhood, that will pray for that neighborhood, who will fight for the people in that neighborhood. And this is exactly what Jesus does for us. He is our leader. He lives in a fallen, broken world compared to what it was like in paradise, in heaven with his heavenly father. Coming down is like going to a neighborhood like this. And Jesus comes and he does that. He is our leader. Now our text really isn't about blessings, but really it's about Jesus, and it is about his love for his people. And so when you think about this text, I want you to think about it in terms of people, because that is what Jesus' ministry was all about. It was about people. It was about going to places that we might not want to go. But Jesus went there because he loves people. Certainly there are sayings out there that, that says, especially one that says, you teach what you know, but you reproduce what you demonstrate. And this is what the Beatitudes is all about about reproducing what Jesus is talking about, what, what Jesus did in the world and replicating it, demonstrating it to the world. Because as we know, these words that Jesus speaks are the complete opposite of what we would think of as being blessings. I mean, first Jesus says, Blessed is the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Notice what Jesus states 
frequently throughout the Beatitudes, especially in these first 12 verses. Three times he talks about the blessedness of being in the kingdom of heaven. Jesus, as he begins his ministry, is starting to point people to what he will do and where he will lead his people, which is the kingdom of heaven. And so Jesus starts off by acknowledging to us that we are all poor in spirit. We are all sinners. And that when we realize that we cannot by ourselves get to the kingdom of heaven, we need to follow someone that can. There's only one person who can, and that is Jesus. And so we follow him. We rely on what he has done for us. He came down to this world to pay the price for us. Us who are poor in spirit. And so yes, we are blessed because of what Christ has done for us. And then he just goes, blessed are those who mourn. Mourn over sin. Express sorrow over the consequences of our sin. Mourn over the sin of the world. For we know that we do not belong here in this world. We belong with him, with our heavenly father. And so, yes, we mourn over what is going on in our world, the sin of the world. Blessed are the meek. And the meek are those that are lowly, that are humble, that realize it's not about us, but it's about others. We look to our neighbor. We look to ways that we can help our neighbor. That's what that lady in St. Louis was looking for, someone who would look out for the people of her neighborhood. Because they are people. They are people that Jesus came to this world for. They are people who need to hear about Jesus. And we need someone to put aside ourselves and look to the needs of others. Because Jesus says, those that are meek, they will inherit the earth. It's following that life. Jesus is the one who teaches us to turn the other cheek, to go the extra mile for others, to put others in front of yourselves. And blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. The primary concern there is that being righteous is being righteous through the faith of Jesus. To seek to live a life that is pleasing toward God. Sharing Christ's righteousness with the world. To make sure that Jesus is that number one person in your lives. And to hunger and thirst for what he has given to you. In making you righteous. He talks about being merciful. No, and this is exactly what Jesus has done for us and has given to us. He has shown mercy to us. Once again, point us back to our sinful nature. Knowing that the consequence of sin is death, yet because of Jesus, we have that reward in heaven. We have been forgiven. And so go and do likewise. This past week, as we look at the, the Lord's Supper or the Lord's Prayer in Confirmation, we talked about that forgiveness of sins. And that we, since we have been forgiven, we are to also forgive others. Not just once or twice. Sometimes that means continually 
forgiving others because that's exactly what God does for us. And so when others come and seek forgiveness, we give that back. Why? Because of the mercy of God and what he has given to us. Blessed are the pure in heart. The pure in heart means that we don't worship false gods. We don't act with ulterior motives. We don't act with selfish interests. But we walk the walk and we talk the talk. We show others who we follow. And then the one that always gets us. Blessed are the persecuted. One that we don't always like to hear. Because who wants to be picked on? Who wants to be persecuted? But yet Jesus said, blessed are those who are persecuted. Because what do you get as a reward? Once again, you get that reward of heaven. You stand firm in what you believe. And you don't give in to the pressures of the world, but you stand up for Jesus. Why? Because he's your savior. He is your Messiah. Because Jesus came for you. And he came for the world. And so blessed. Blessings. What does this mean? Well, certainly it means that we care about people, much like Jesus did. Jesus' whole ministry was about people. Read through the scriptures, read through his ministry, and what does he do? He goes and meets with people. And I think that if Jesus were to come back today, the neighborhood in that picture is probably where you would find Jesus. Because we already know about Jesus. We know that one day we will be with him. But there are probably a lot of people in that neighborhood who don't know about him. And Jesus loves those people. And so kind of as I looked at this passage and really studied it again, it made me think of how can we help those in need? How can, they, how can we make others feel blessed? And it's through Jesus. It's maybe helping other people organizations or causes that point people to Jesus. And on February 9th, on Giving Hearts Day, you have an opportunity to give to other organizations that can point people to Jesus. Point people to their source of blessings. For in Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, he ends it by saying that you will be made perfect. Perfect as your heavenly Father. And it's not about what you can do that will make you perfect. But it is in me, Jesus, who will make you perfect. Perfect. You were made holy. And this is what Jesus has done for us. 
For Jesus did all the things that were listed in the Beatitudes, and he did them perfectly. Something that we just can't do. We can strive for them, but we will always fall. We will always be poor in spirit. But the one who makes us whole, perfect, holy, is the one who is speaking these words. The one who is speaking these words has called us to follow him. To follow his example, to demonstrate these things. To put others ahead of yourselves. But most importantly, to point people to the greatest reward ever. Which is that reward of the kingdom of heaven. And so we are blessed. We are blessed because of Jesus. And only because of him. And so let us go and imitate our Savior. To God be the glory forever and ever. Amen. We now continue in our service by joining together and confessing the words of the Apostles' Creed. Let us stand if you are able. And we confess, I believe in God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, descended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God, Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for all people who call out to God in their distress, for our brothers and sisters who are poor in spirit because of outside oppression or personal problems, that God will remind them of their heavenly citizenship. Let us pray to the Lord. Bless them for Jesus' sake, O Lord. For those who mourn, especially the family of Sherry Baltima, who passed away this past week, that by their faith in Christ's resurrection, they would be comforted. Let us pray to the Lord. Bless them for Jesus' sake, O Lord. For those who are meek as they thirst for righteousness, that God would raise up local and national leaders to provide security and justice for all. Let us pray to the Lord. Bless them for Jesus' sake, O Lord. For those who reflect the mercy of God as they tend to the physical, emotional, and spiritual needs of those under their care that God would give them wisdom and strength. And we especially pray for those that are in our Trinity family, that are listed in our bulletin, and for those whom we now lift up to you in our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Bless them. For those who single-mindedly focus on sharing God's peace with conflicted people around them, that God would keep them strong in faith to use every opportunity at their disposal. Let us pray to the Lord. Bless them for Jesus' sake, O Lord. Lord Jesus, you give us so much to rejoice in, especially those who celebrate a birthday this week. For Betty, Dave, Brett, and Dennis. We also thank you for your continued blessings upon marriages, especially to Bob and Lynn, who celebrate another year of marriage this week. Let us pray to the Lord. Bless them for Jesus' sake, O Lord. For ourselves in every difficulty, that God would remind us of Christ having done in our stead all that he calls us to do. Let us pray to the Lord. 
and grateful thanksgiving, we rejoice this day and look forward to the reward our Savior won for us. To you alone, O Father, be all the glory. With you, O Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as we offer up our offerings and tithes. If you didn't place the offering when you came in, uh, there'll be an offering plate located up here. Um, and so I just ask that you uh, reflect on our offering video for today. I invite you to stand if you are able as we prepare to come to the Lord's table. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right to give him thanks and praise. it is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, for what had been hidden from before the foundation of the world, you have made known to the nations in your Son. In him, being found in the substance of our mortal nature, you have manifested the fullness of your glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and to be our Savior. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Graciously receive our prayers. Deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and broke it, and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this as often as you eat it in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Take and drink. This cup is a New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you, for the forgiveness of all your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And we join together in praying the prayer our Lord has taught us to pray in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And you may be seated. Until life everlasting, depart in our risen Lord's peace.
And now having received Christ's true body and blood, may it strengthen you and preserve you in your faith until life everlasting. To pardon our risen Lord's peace, your sins are forgiven. I invite you to stand if you are able as we continue with prayer. And let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us join together in saying our ascending prayer. Be reminded that, that Christ has called us to imitate him, to maybe go to places that might be a little scary for us so that we can share with them the blessings of Jesus and that reward that he has given to all people in heaven. And so as we pray, think of someone who needs to hear of those blessings that Christ has given to the world. And we pray Lord, lay some soul upon my heart, and love that soul through me, and may I ever do my part to win that soul for thee. And I'll receive our Lord's benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And the Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. We conclude with our final hymn, Lift High the Cross. Go in peace as you serve the Lord. Be you may be seated for just a couple announcements. Just a couple things to draw your attention to. Just a reminder that uh, this coming Saturday, uh, we have the opportunity to go and uh, do the mobile pack uh, for Feed My Starving Children. Uh, and so that is from 12 to 2. We have a sign-up sheet on the, the bulletin board there. If you would like to come and join us, uh, you can sign up uh, on there. Also, uh, last week, my daughter, uh, Megan, uh, kind of talked about her mission trip to Africa uh, and the upcoming fundraiser that she has uh, for the Kids' Night Out. Uh, and so that is uh, February 11th. Uh, and so if you would like to have your kids come for that, 
Uh, there's a sign-up sheet there. Please sign up by this coming today, right? Next week. Next, Next Sunday. Just talk to Megan, um, and she'll, <laughs> she'll square you away with that. Um, also, uh, February 9th is uh, the opportunity that we have. It's a Tuesday for Giving Hearts Day. Uh, and so in a couple, about a week, we will have uh, kind of our page that was set up uh, for us that you can kind of go and donate toward. Uh, so we have matching funds up to $1,000. Uh, and so there are a, a list of about 20 organizations that we have kind of um, put out there, selected for you to kind of look at um, to support. Um, so if you have any questions, you can kind of let me know, um, and we'll get that out to our members uh, when that is all done. Uh, we should be in about a week. Um, and so that is all that I have. All right, just a few things to let you know about um, coming up in a couple of weeks. We are going to have a family game night on Saturday, February 18th from 6 to 8. Um, everyone is welcome to join us for that. Bring some snacks and some games to share, and we will have a great night. Um, and then also we are doing a um, women and dinner, women's dinner and service project on February 20th. Um, so we, a couple, was it just last Monday? I don't know. Yeah, probably. We um, prepared some hot dishes and so um, we're gonna, for the Moorhead School Food Pantry. So we're going to do that again in February. Um, so if you'd like to join us for that, you can sign up on the bulletin board. That is all. All right. Uh, so go have a blessed rest of your day. Uh, join us for Sunday School and Bible Study uh, and Fellowship uh, in the Fellowship Hall there. And just have a, a wonderful rest of your day. Be reminded uh, of the blessings that God has given to us through Jesus. Um, and the reward that we have in heaven. Um, and so follow him, imitate him uh, to those you come in contact with. And so blessings on your day. I look forward to greeting you in the back. Blow it out.